Lesson 42, the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Example 3. Use the chi-squared goodness of fit test and the Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey to determine if it is reasonable to assume that the GPA of Sierra College Elementary Statistics students follows a normal distribution. In this example, we're asked to use the chi-squared goodness of fit test. The chi-squared goodness of fit test is used to determine if the expected frequencies, generated according to a hypothesis, fit the observed frequencies, which are determined by the actual sample data values. So the actual sample data values we're using come from the Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey. So the GPAs collected in the Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey will be used to determine the observed frequencies in the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Now this goodness of fit test is going to be used to determine if it is reasonable to assume that the GPA of Sierra College Elementary Statistics students follows a normal distribution. So this is the idea that's going to be used to generate the expected values. So the normal probability distribution will be used to generate the expected frequencies in the chi-squared goodness of fit test. So following the steps in the chi-squared goodness of fit test, we start by stating the hypotheses. In the chi-squared goodness of fit test, the hypotheses HO and H1 are always stated in the same manner. HO is that all of the expected frequencies fit the observed frequencies, and H1 is not all of the expected frequencies fit the observed frequencies. Next, we indicate the level of significance we'll use in the test. In this case, we're using the customary alpha equal 0.05. Next, we can use the TI-84 calculator to calculate the p-value required to make the decision. In order to do this, we need to enter the observed frequencies, or sample data, into list 1, and the expected frequencies, according to the idea, in list 2. The standard score for a random variable that follows a normal probability distribution will take on the following values with these corresponding probabilities. Standard scores in the range of negative 4.5 to negative 1.5 occur with a normal probability of 0 0.0668. Standard scores in the range from negative 1.5 to negative 0 0.5 occur with a probability of 0 0.2417. Standard scores from negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5 occur with a normal probability of 0 0.3829. And standard scores from positive 0 0.5 to positive 1.5 occur with a probability of 0 0.2417 and standard scores on the scale from positive 1.5 to positive 4.5 occur with a normal probability of 0 0.0668. These normal probabilities were calculated using the normal probability distribution on the TI-84 calculator. This was done by selecting the distribution menu by going second and vars, arrow down to select normal CDF, and then we entered the range of standard scores. First, we have negative 4.5 comma to negative 1.5. Pressing enter will calculate the normal probability of a standard score being in this range, which was 0 0.0668. To do the next interval, we would go second DISTR, select the normal CDF, enter in the range of standard scores from negative 1.5 comma to negative 0 0.5. Pressing enter would calculate the normal probability for this range, which was 0 0.2417. Second, DISTR, arrow down to normal CDF, enter, and then enter negative 0 0.5, comma, positive 0 0.5. Enter produces the normal probability of 0 0.3829. Second, DISTR, arrow down to normal CDF, enter, and then enter the range of values from 0 0.5 comma to positive 1.5. Enter produces a normal probability of 0 0.2417. And then second, DISTR, arrow down to normal CDF, enter, and then the range from positive 1.5 comma to positive 4.5 enter 
gives the normal probability of 0 0.0668. So it's these normal probabilities which will be used to calculate the expected values. The expected values are calculated by taking n, the total sample size, times p sub i, the corresponding probabilities. In this case, the Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey has a total sample size n equal to 44. So taking the sample size of n equals 44 and multiplying it by these corresponding normal probabilities will calculate the expected frequencies. We can enter these values in the TI-84 calculator by pressing STAT, ENTER, and then we can arrow up to the cursors on the list name and press CLEAR ENTER to clear out the old list of data to make room for the new list. In list 3, we can enter the normal probabilities, starting with 0 0.0668, enter, and then 0.2417, enter, 0.3829, enter, 0.2417, enter, and 0 0.0. 668, enter. With these normal probabilities in list 3, we can arrow over and up so the cursor is on the L2 list name, and then we can enter in the N of 44 times second 3 for list 3, and pressing enter will calculate the expected frequencies in list 2. Now we could use the Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey to calculate the corresponding observed frequencies. Question five in the student survey asked the students what their college GPA was. So here we could use this data to count the observed frequencies in each of the values. Except the GPAs are data values recorded on a GPA scale. Here we need to convert into the standard score in order to see which data values fit into this range of standard score values. The formula for the standard score is calculated by taking x, the particular data value, in this case the student's GPA, and subtracting x bar, the mean for that sample, and dividing that deviation by s sub x, the standard deviation. We could do this in the T84 calculator by arrowing over and up to the L1 list name, and then enter the formula for the standard score starting with a left parenthesis, and then second list to get to the list names, arrow down to the cursor is next to Q5, which is the GPA in the Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey, press enter to select, and then subtract the mean by going second list, arrow over to math, and then arrow down to select the mean, press enter, and then we want the mean of the question 5 GPA data. So we go second list, place the cursor next to Q5, press enter, and then close parenthesis on the mean function and close parenthesis on the numerator. Divide by the standard deviation. This is found by pressing second list, arrowing over to math, and then arrow down to STDEV, which is short for standard deviation, press enter, and then second list, an arrow down to the cursor is next to Q5 for the GPA data, press enter to select, right parenthesis to close, and then enter calculates the standard scores and places the values into list one. Now, one way that we can count this is by making a histogram by going second y equals enter. The plot is turned on. Down arrow to type, select the histogram icon to make a histogram. Arrow down to x list and go second one so we can use our standard score data in list one. Now to set up the window, we press window. Here, the minimum standard score was a negative 4.5, enter. The maximum standard score in the scale went all the way up to a positive 4.5, enter, and then the x scale is grouping by 1. 
the Y minimum or minimum frequency is always zero. The maximum frequency we estimate to be in the sample size, in this case 44, divided by 2. And to count from 0 to 22, we'll count by 2s. Now by pressing the graph button, we could see our histogram based on this standard score scale. Pressing trace, we can go through and count the frequencies. So as we go from a negative 4.5 up to the negative 1.5, we have 1 plus 2 or three data values fit into that group. Right arrow over to the negative 1.5 to negative 0.5 range, we see that in the frequency is 13. From negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, in the frequency was 16. From 0.5 to 1.5, the frequency n equals nine. Arrow over to 1.5, we find that there are three and nothing else beyond that up to 4.5. So, our corresponding observed frequency values can now be entered. We press STAT, ENTER. Here I'm going to arrow up to LIST1, press CLEAR, ENTER. We don't need the standard scores anymore. Instead, we need to enter the observed frequencies into LIST1. So we observed a frequency of 3, and then 13, 16, 9, and 3. So here are our observed frequencies for this sample data according to these standard score scales. So now with the observed frequencies in list one and the expected frequencies in list two, we can continue with our chi-squared goodness of fit hypothesis test and use the chi-squared GOF test command to calculate the p-value. Now the chi-squared GOF test command is conducted with C minus one degrees of freedom. In this case, we broke up the GPAs into five separate categories defined by the standard score. So the degrees of freedom are these five categories minus one or four. The chi-square GOF test command is found by pressing stat, arrowing over to tests, and then arrowing up to put the cursor next to the chi-square GOF test command. Press enter. We entered the observed values in list one, the expected values in list two, and df, the degrees of freedom, was the five minus one, or four. Press enter on calculate, and we have our p-value calculated. The p-value rounded off to three places after the decimal is approximately 0.935. So now that we have our p-value, we can use it to reach our decision. Since the p-value of 0.935 is not 0.05 or less, the decision is to not reject HO. And we do not, when we do not reject HO, HO is considered to be valid. In this case, all of the expected frequencies seem to fit the observed frequencies. So, based on our work in this chi-squared goodness of fit test, we can reach the following conclusion. Therefore, all of the expected frequencies, which were generated by using the normal probability distribution, fit the observed frequencies. So, it is reasonable to assume that the GPA of Sierra College elementary statistics students follows a normal distribution.